תקדוש, בוקר אור, מסכת במציאה, דף מ"ד עמוד א', 44A1. We are just going to start in 43B, the Mishnah, so that we were back into it. Mishnah says, החושב לשלוח יד בפיקדון. If you thought in your mind to come and to put your hand in a פיקדון, which means that you want to take it for yourself, but you didn't actually do anything, you just thought about it. So Bet Shemai says you're going to be chayav, but the machshava is already considered enough. And Bet Hillel says, אינו חייב את שישלח בו יד, you're not going to be chayav until you actually put your hand on it. And before, meaning that you actually did do it. שניהם, right, but it says in the פסוק, אם לא שלח ידו במלאכת רעו. If you didn't send your hand to the מלאכת רעו. Another case, what happens if you're a hitay chavit, you inclined the barrel, right, and a talimenu revit, and you took a revit in order to drink from it. And then afterwards, the barrel broke, be honest, after a little while. You only pay a revit, because you were only sholeach yad in a revit, which means you only wanted to steal a revit. But if you picked it up, and you took a revit, And then it broke while you picked it up. Meshalem deme kula. Because if you did hear the hagba'a, hagba'a, you acquired it. Meaning there you tilted it, so you didn't actually acquire it. But here you did hagba'a. Hagba'a is picking something up. When you pick up something, so you acquire it. Therefore, you have to pay for the entire thing. And now this is where we're going to be starting on the Gemara. Omem Dalet Amud Aleph. So says the Gemara, Menahan Emile. How do we know these words? Remember, in our Mishnah, we have a machloke between Bet Shabbat and Bet Hillel. If machshava, if the mindset is enough, in order to be mechayev or not. Menahan Emile, how do we know these words? It says in the Pasuk, What does it mean that it says, if you didn't send your hand into the work of your friend, which means that you didn't touch it. So he says, on any pesha, on any pshia, Bet Shemai tells you, because pesha is, al kol devar is dibur shel pesha, which means we're talking about the kavana to do a pesha. So therefore, since it tells, right, we're talking about mahashava. And therefore, even if you had a mahashava to do the shalach yadom lechetreu, it's already enough. And you're going to be chayav. Kapish? Who knows? What? Yeah, outside of our girls, who? So Bet Shemai was the one that says, I'll call the Varpesha, and once it says, Pesha, so it's connected, there's a Hekesh. Some people, they, they like to do Hekesh. So therefore, they're Makish, one beside each other. So therefore, just like the Varpesha, is we're talking about the Mahshava, so to here, we're talking about the Mahshava. Says the Gemara, says, You're not going to be unless you actually put your hand on it. That's it. It's a mamash. Ah, says Beti Lel. It says Al Yeah, it says Al So he comes and he says, Fine. So he says, Amal they come and they say, Yeah, Amru Lahem Beti Lel Bet Shamai says Beti Lel to Bet Shamai. Yeah, what does that mean if you're not going to come and send your hand in the melechet of your friend? So he comes and he says, what are we talking about then? So he comes and he says, and from there we're learning, so what are we talking about then? Right? What about if it's only him? Right? But if it's his Eved or Shaliyah, Minayim. Meaning like this, until now, what are we talking about? That you put your hand into the thing. What happens if I tell my Evid? Yeah, I come and say, Mordechai, come. Put your hand in it. Right? Take it. Or you're my shaliyah. Yeah? So he says, how do we know? Tamul omar al pesha, which means the person's going to be mitchayev even al pidi buro. That means even I sent my shaliyah Mordechai to come and to do it, it doesn't matter. Why? I'm still chayat. Because he's my shliach. And ever since he's my shliach, he's under me. So that's what it means when it says, I called the Varpesha, even al pi dibur. That means even though I didn't, because it says, I didn't send my hand, but I sent my messenger. No, that's already enough. Kapish? Okay. Okay, clear. So that was machloke between Met Shammai and Bet What are the words I'll call the Varpesha coming to include? Machshava? So for the Machshavah, is like the Maaseh, that was Bet Shammai, or the Shliach or the Eved. 
that even though the shliach of the Eved wasn't me that shalach yadom and lechet reu, I sent my shliach, huh? that's already enough. Next. Hitat ha-chavit. If you come and you incline the havit, which means that you come and you put, you tilted it in order to take out the wine. So Amar Rabbah, Rabbah says, Lo shara, what are we talking about? Ela nishbera, right? If it broke. Avalech mitza. But if it became chometz, meshalemet kula. One more time, what are we talking about? We're talking about that you didn't actually make a kinyan. Because if you actually would have done hagba, you're chayav on the entire thing, even though you only took a revit. We're talking about you tilted it. So since you tilted it, you're not going to be chayav on the kinyan on the entire thing. However, though, what happens if it became chometz? So he comes and he says, if it became chometz, you have to pay the entire burial. My time, what's the reasoning? Gire didehu da'anile. It's because you were the you were the cause of it to become uh, chometz. Right? Because basically, when it's in a full utensil, it doesn't become chometz. But once you take out some of the wine, it becomes chometz quicker. So therefore, you are poshia and the fact that you took out some of the wine to drink, you were negligent and now you caused it. It was like your 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 arrows. That's the literal translation, gire de de, your arrows. I mean that you caused it to become chometz. What happens if you picked it up and then you took a revit? So says the Gemara, Amar Shemuel says Shemuel, Lo natal natal mamash. We're not talking about that you actually took the revit. The fact that you picked up the barrel to take a revit, even though you didn't take anything. You took nothing. Doesn't matter. The fact that you picked it up to take a revit from it, you already were kone, the entire barrel is yours. And therefore it breaks afterwards, it's Kaddish on you. Right? Not anybody else. So Lema Kasava Shmuel, we want to actually say that maybe all like Shmuel, that Shmuel holds Shlichut Yad and Atzicha Chisaron, that it does not need a Chisaron, which means here you didn't actually take anything. And still we want to say that it's Kilu Shlichut Yad. That means even though you didn't make, you didn't take the Revit, you just picked it up. You were going to take the Revit. But the fact that you picked it up, Kaddish, that's it. Yeah? Yeah, the whole barrel, the whole barrel. No, you picked up the whole barrel. You have to pick up the barrel to take the Revit. So here it says, Lema Kasava Shmuel, Shlichut Yad and Atzicha Chisaron. Amri, they said no. Shane Hacha, here it's different. The Nichalet Tehavea Chavit Kula Basis La Revit. You want the, the entire barrel would be a basis for that Revit in order to make sure that it's not going to become Chometz. And therefore, he comes and he says, But if it was going to be already empty, okay, because he says here that the wine becomes more Chometz in a Kli Chaser. Meaning, if you want to make sure that the wine does not become vinegar, make sure that it's a full bottle of wine. You're not going to come in the, it's lacking, it's much easier to become vinegar. So by Ravashi, Ravashi comes and he says, arneki lito dinar. If you picked up a wallet in order to take a dinar, ma'u, what's salacha? So you picked up the entire wallet, but you're only going to take a dinar. So what's salacha? So he says over here, yeah, what's salacha? He says, hamra udelo mintar alagav hamra, aval zuza mintar, odil mashan netilut adana ki mintar al dinar. He comes and he says like this, by the... By the wine, maybe I'm going to say wine watches over other wine. And therefore, since the wine watches over the other wine, even on the Ravid, because we remember, we just said that as long as it's going to be a full barrel of wine, it's not going... So therefore, it makes sense. But if you're going to tell me now, Zuza Mintar, which means that the money is going to be watched over, so he says, so therefore, the, the money, even a one Zuz, you're going to watch. Meaning, what's the difference between you have to watch over a dollar or a hundred dollars? It's, it's the same thing. I'm saying you're watching over a dollar. Oh, Dilmar, maybe you're going to tell me, no, you're never going to compare watching over a full wallet and watching over one dollar. It's never the same. Take, we don't have an answer. We don't have an answer. Meaning by the wine, for sure, we wanted to say that, listen, that for sure you wanted the wine in this way and this way. But here, we do not, take, we do not have an answer. Okay. We're starting a new peric. Perek Revi'i, the fourth chapter, Memdalet Amudale 44a. We are starting a new Perek. Says the Mishnah, Hazahav, Kone et Akesef, which means that when a person gives golden coins for silver coins, Hazahav is going to be Kone et Akesef. But Kesef is not going to be Kone the Zahav. Okay, so if you took, if you did Mishicha, Right? So therefore, you're going to acquire the coins of Kesef. But if you did Meshicha on the Kesef, you're not going to acquire the Zahav. Obviously, we're going to see why. Okay? Even though the Dina Zahav is worth more, 
but obviously not because we have to see why. Okay, it comes out, right, that, right, that the meshicha of the coin, right, is not one of the tzadim to be mechozer and to be matel the mekach. Hanechoshet, copper, you're going to acquire the kesef, but the kesef does not acquire the copper. Okay. Okay, fine. Well, we're going to see over here, right? The he says over here. Okay, yeah, it all depends on the nechoshet. The yes, that's a yes, hundred percent. So okay, but still, it could be that there are certain places where they don't want it. I mean, it's not because of the of the inferior value, right? But we're going to see it. We're going to see in the gemara what, what exactly are we trying to do over here? Maot araot, <clears throat> bad money, meaning money. You know, sometimes you get these coins which they look terrible or dollar bills. That they're half torn and all those things, right? So maot araot konot tayefot. They get the good ones, but the good ones do not buy the bad ones. Next, a simon, right? And a simon is a coin that does not have a tsura, right? When Mordechai looks at me, because in Israel they used to have the simon that they used to put in the foam, right? And then uh, they used to tie a string, so the in the right? yeah. And then they used to tie a string in the middle, put it inside the foam. Right, they used to make the phone call, and then afterwards, oh, oops, they used to pull it out. Yeah, these guys are. Yeah, these guys are the masters. Yeah, Rabbi, did you do, how do you know all of these things in the yeshiva? You didn't. So now that it says about the simon, konet amadbea, you're going to acquire the matbea, but the matbea, you're not going to acquire the simon. Now, when it says here metaltalin, you're going to acquire the matbea, <clears throat> but the matbea, you're not going to acquire metaltalin. So the general rule is, okay, you could take out the Zakalal, because it's in those types of brackets. Metaltalin can acquire each other. So Ketzad, what's the case exactly? So for example, the Gemara is going to explain exactly. It says, If you're going to come and you're going to drag the Perot, meaning you're pushing it, right? Or any other Metaltalin. You still didn't give the money. You can't retract on the Mekach anymore. Meaning imagine, I took the thing and I was dragging it. Even though I didn't pay you, the second that I started dragging it, I cannot retract. So all of a sudden now, if I find out that the price went down, and now I want to—I don't want it anymore, but I want to give it back to you, I can't. Because the second that I did the Kenya Meshicha, that's it. It's mine. Right? Even though I didn't give the money. Now, tell me what If you gave the money, but you still didn't do the Meshicha, you could retract. So imagine, I gave you the money, and all of a sudden the price went down. I said, no, give me the money back. I didn't do a Kenya. You could come. Kinyan you could take matters. the... Yes, a Kenya is what matters. Not anything else. Okay. Fine. Next. Aval amru, but they said, "Ni she para me anshe dora mabulu mi dora palaga, hu atili para me me she eno me bediburo." Meaning, there's a mi she para. A lot of a lot of times you'll probably hear this phrase, "Mi she para." What does that mean? Even though we just said that you're allowed to retract, but the one that castigated. Right? Look in the Tosot Yom Tov is Mishe Para and not Mishe Nifra. It's Mishe Para, which is HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that he was the one that punished the Dora Mabul and Dora Palaga. Okay? So therefore, he's going to also punish people that they do not stand by their word. And we're going to speak about it in the Gimana. Okay? So therefore, this guy, okay, fine. He retracted because he gave you the money, but he didn't do the Meshicha. But still, there's a concept of Mishe Para. Okay? Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, Kol Kesef Yado, if the mocher already got the money in his hand, so therefore he could be mevatel the mekach if he wants to, right? Mashen can the lokeach that he already gave the money, he can't be the means meaning the only one that could retract is the one that has the money in his hand, but not the one that already gave the money. Okay, that's what he's saying. Fine, let's see the gemara. Okay, gemara on the bottom of mendale the mudalit. Matni la lei rabbi rabbi Shimon bere. So Rabbi came and he taught the mishnah to Rabbi Shimon his son. Hazahav konet the kesef. Amalo Rabbi. So imagine the son comes and he tells his father, Rebbe, Shanita lanu biyaldutecha ha kesef konet hazahav. He says, one second, I thought that you taught us when you were younger, right, that the kesef is konet hazahav, not the other way around. What's going on? So he comes and he says like this, biyaldutei masafar. When he was young, what did he, what did he, what did he believe? You got Baba Kama, not Baba Messiah. Biyaldutei masafar. What did he think when he was going to be? Right? So he said, when he was young, he thought, right? 
הב היא טבעה. גם מטבע זהב is very very יקר. And therefore it's מאות את תשלום. אוקיי? But כסף is not חשוב. So I pay that's like a tree. And therefore just like right when we're talking about the entire concept of מאות is much more important than סחורה. Meaning money is more important than produce. They can't even pay the letiva. So therefore I'm going to say that the kesef, which is the pri, is going to be koneh the zahav. But not the other way around. But when he got older, he held kaspa, the money, memdalad amubet, 44b. The kharif, izovel asokher havi tiva. That is considered the tiva, which is the money. Dahava, the lo kharif, the gold, which is not kharif, havi peda is considered perot. They can't even pay the letiva. So therefore the peda is going to be uh, koneh. Meaning like this. Can you now go to a store and buy something with gold? No. No. Yeah, nobody, you can't go to a Publix and start giving them gold. It could be worth whatever you want. It's not going to work. If I go to Publix and I tell them, listen, I've got a dollar gun. Yeah, I want I want to pay with my watch. Now, my watch is a Rolex, right? It's not, but uh, let's pretend, yeah? So the, the watch is a Rolex, which is $100,000. Yeah? Can they accept it? No. If the teller is smart, if the cashier is smart, what he'll do is he'll take it, he'll pay the dollar, and he keeps the watch. That, yes. But can I pay with the watch? No. Okay. Right? Why? I mean, exactly. In the, in, the, in the past, maybe yes. But nowadays, it doesn't work. But it's not the same, uh, it's not the same currency. If I'm, if I'm the storekeeper, right, and the store does not accept uh, yen, or I don't know what, let's say the pound, or the, right, which is a higher currency, the guy could come and he's going to give me a pound, which is worth more. But if I don't accept the currency, it just doesn't work, right? It doesn't matter if the value is more expensive. So therefore, he went and he said, right? At the beginning, he wanted to say, listen, he wanted to say, right? When he was young, he went and he said, the gold is chashuv, and therefore, that's the real money. The kesef is not chashuv, and therefore, it's like a peri. So for sure, right? He's saying that the pero, the kesef, could acquire the ma'ot, but not the other way around. But then that's why he said that the kesef could be kone, the pera, the pri, but not the other way around. When he got older, that he got, uh, um, that basically he realized, what does it mean now the value of money? What you're able to use. What you're able to use is better. So therefore, he comes and he says, Dahava, which is gold, which you cannot use all the time, that is considered the pri, right? And the kesef is actually considered the actual money. But the kesef is what you use. You understood? So for example, if I'm going to be, right, if I'm going to be here in America, the euro is worth more than the dollar. But if you're going to give me a euro, I'm not going to accept it. Ah, it's worth more, but it doesn't matter. It's not currency. Because unless I go to a currency exchange or whatever it is, and then I do, but that's, I have to go to a special place to do that. I cannot use it in the day-to-day. -day. I cannot use yeah, that in a day-to-day, -day, right? So that's what we're talking about. So Amar Ravashi, Ravashi comes and he says, Ki mistabra. Do you know it was more logical when he was younger? It was more logical. He says, why? Midiktani for the fact that he taught a nechoshet konet a kesef, that nechoshet acquires the kesef. Now, if you're going to tell me now that kaspa legabedava perahave, that the dinar of the kesef is considered peri to do with the dinar of zahav, just like he taught when he was younger, hainu de kaktani, that's why he taught a nechoshet konet a kesef. The afal piv, but even though the afal piv de legabe, the hava perahavia, but even though kesef is considered peri to do with zahav, but to do with nechoshet, tivahave. Right? To do with prutot of nechoshet, the dinar kesef is considered it. Why? He comes and he says, because we already taught that the bamea kesef is considered fruits to do with the dinar zahav. So therefore, we have to learn what exactly is considered the pri. So he says, ama, but if you're going to tell me now, kaspa, legabe da, dava tivahave, and if you're going to tell me now that the dinar kesef is considered the tiva, right? To do with the dinar zahav. So now it doesn't make sense. If you're going to tell me now by, by the gold, and we already said that the gold is more expensive, and still the kesef is going to be better, you just said that it's going to be the tiva. We know that the nechoshet is also chashiv, and it's also chariv, which means because people use it more. Because when they go to the shuk, they use the nechoshet more than the kesef. But the nechoshet was like the sense or things like that. So they used to use those coins even much more than the than the silver coins. So therefore, me buy it. Do you have even a question? Well, what's what's this effect then? So obviously, it's much better to say like what he said in his youth than what he said when he was older. So says the Gemara, it's not true. Why? I actually need it. 
Salka daita chamina, I would have thought to say, Hane prite beatra de sagye, these prutot of nechoshet, because remember, the, the nechoshet is like the pennies. Pennies is made out of copper, right? So these prutot is beatra de sagye, is in a place where they actually mikabel in the shuk. Ve'inu kharif etfe mi kaspa. So therefore you're right, it's much better than kesef. So imatabi, then I'm going to say it's going to be that that's better, because that's a tiv'ah. Kamashmalan kamsichu kevin de ika duchta de lo sagye be. Since there are certain places where they don't accept this, pay to have it. Meaning certain places, they don't even accept it. They don't accept coins. Do you know, by the way, nowadays it's like that. Nowadays, right, there's a lot of places they don't want to, they don't accept any more pennies. They don't accept any more all these things, right? No. Right? So they don't have all these things, okay? One second, right? The Afrebichia Saver Dahava Tivave. And even Rabbi Chia holds that the gold is considered tiva. The Rav Ozif dinare mi brated Rabbi Chia. Rav he borrowed the money of Zahav from the daughter of Rabbi Chia. The lesof yaked dinare. And then it went up in price, meaning the dinare Zahav went up in price. Ata lekemed Rabbi Chia. He came in front of Rabbi Chia. The Amar le and he comes and he tells him zil shalim la tavinut kilin. You have to go and pay your dinare Zahav good ones, right? Which means that there's no isur. Meaning, even though it went up in value and everything, there's no Yisur of Rebit. Because you would have said that maybe there's a problem of Rebit. You understand? You know what the Rebit is. Yeah, interest. Why? Because basically, if it goes up in price, I'm giving you more now. Because you let me a, you let me a dollar. If the dollar went up in price, and we're in Israel, right? So the shekel, you let me a dollar. Now if the dollar went up in price, and I'm giving you back a dollar, I'm giving you more money. Right? But there's no problem. So he says, You're going to tell me now that it's considered the money. So Shapir makes sense. But if you're going to tell me now it's a payday, Right? It's, it's a it's You're not allowed to do that with uh, fruits. Because if you have a se'a and a se'a, one se'a and another se'a, you borrowed a se'a of, uh, let's say, potatoes. Yeah, and then you give it back. Uh, it, it, it's it's, it's going to be a sur. You're not allowed to if it goes up in value. So answers the Gemara, Rav dinare havele, the kevin davle dinare, na seke omella, halvini at shiavo beni, right? Oh, at shem tzayta matpeach. This is very, very important in Yichot Rebit. If you want to borrow money, let's say you live in Israel, yeah, and you want to borrow dollars, you always have to have one dollar. Because by having one dollar, even if the price of the dollars go up, yeah, it goes up, it's not considered a bit. Because that's what he's saying over here. It's like, Ki'ilu, that since he already had the Nani Zahav, so it's like as if that you're saying that it's Ki'ilu, that I ah, wait until my son comes, meaning I have the money. So therefore, it's not a real loan. It's just you're just giving it to me for the time being until I'm going to give it back to you. So the fact that I have it, it takes away from the Yisur of Ribit as long as I have also a dinar. Okay? And that's Allah, by the way. You always have to have it. So if, if whatever it is that you're going to borrow, make sure you have the same currency and therefore there's not going to be a problem of the Ribit. Okay? So Amar Rava. Rava Kamni says, Hai Tana, this Tana, Savar Dava Tiva Have. He holds the Bemet Dinare Zahav are considered Tiva. Right? The, the time was we learned in Abraita. Pruta shamru is a chamishmona b'isara italki. When we talk about a pruta, it's also going to it's always going to be one eighth of an isara italki. My nafka, what's an nafka mina? He says the kiddushi isha for kiddushin of a woman. Okay, isar is going to be one twenty fourth of a dinar of kesef. The my nafka mina meka chumemka when you're doing businesses. Again, if you look in the footnotes, he's going to go into all the different uh, you know like the the, the non denominations of money. It's like you're doing money currencies. Okay, dinar of kesef. Is one twenty fifth of a dinar of a zahav. Lemay nafkamina pidyon ben. Why you have to know the shiur of pidyon ben? So if you're allowed to do it with shavu kesef. So therefore, what happens is that it, now it's going to change the value. So you have to know exactly how much is the value. So says the gemara. I am a bishlama. I understand tiva have if it's going to be the tiva. So mishayer tana bemida the kitz. So therefore, right, we're going to come and we're going to be mishayer with something that does not change. But if you're going to tell me it's a payday. Are you going to come and start doing an evaluation with something that fluctuates in price, that goes up and down? You're going to tell me Pidyon Ben. I already know the value of the Pidyon Ben, the Kamarnu, right? The five silver coins. Now, if you're going to come and you're going to start telling me, no, but it, so then what? It's going to start fluctuating. It's going to go up, down, up, down. What's going on? So, maybe it could happen that the coin will have to come and give it back. And sometimes you're actually going to add on more to the coin. But rather, it comes to teach you. That it's going to be considered the tiva to do with the kesef. Shmamina, that's what we actually learn. Okay? 
fine. So not hatam. We learned over there. Bet Shemai Omri. Bet Shemai says, "Lo yase adam slaim dinar ezav." A person should never make a slaim, right? Which is basically the maaseh sheni on dinar ezav. Bet Hillel says you're allowed to. Rav Yochum Rav Neshakish. Rav Yochum Rav Neshakish. One of them says it's actually a machloket the slaim on dinarim slaim, which are going to be kosher, meaning holy, because of the maaseh sheni on dinarim. The Bet Shemai Sabri because Bet Shemai holds kaspa tiva v'dava pere that the kesef is going to be the tiva and the dava is going to be the the fruits. The tiva peter mecharin, therefore you cannot do the tiva on the peterot. And betilel hold kas peter v'dava tiva, the exact opposite. That the the kesef is fruit and the gold is the tiva. U peter tiva mechalinan, aval peterot dinanin diverko mechalin. Make sense? So my tama, what's reasoning? Midi da hava kesef le betilel. It's like the kesef of betilel. Kesef betilel if you have the kaspa le gabe dava peter, even though kesef to do with the gold, it's considered a fruit. The gabe peter, it's considered. So too also Zahav for Bet Shemai. Even though gold to do with Kesef is considered a fruit, to do with the fruits, it's considered a Tiva. It's considered, right, the Tiva. We're going to be, okay, fine. So says the Gemara, Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Shakish. There's a machloket between Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Shakish. Chad Amar, one of them said it's a machloket is b'slaim on the dinarim, because Bet Shammai hold that kaspa tiva v'dava peira, which means that the kesef is going to be the teva, the the the, 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 the maot, right, and the dava, the gold is going to be perot. V'tiva perot mechalel. So therefore, you cannot be mechalel maot maaser sheni on that. And Bet Hillel hold that kaspa peira v'dava, the exact opposite, that the kaspa is is going to be the peira. And the dava is going to be the tiva. And therefore, if you do that, peira tiva mechaladin, you are allowed to do it. Aval perot al dinanim. And we were talking about perot of maaser sheni mamash on golden coins. Because we were talking about the slaim and, and the, the gold. Now we're talking about fruits on the golden coins. Divre akol, according to everybody, you're allowed to. My time, what's the reasoning? Midi da hava kesef le betilel. It's like kesef for betilel. Kesef le betilel, I've got the kaspa le gabe dava peira even though the kesef for the gold is considered peira, but to do with the fruits in itself, it's considered tiva. And zahav nami, also gold for bet shamai, afal gav dava legabe kaspa peira even though the gold by the kesef is considered fruits, legabe peira tiva it's considered, right, the tiva. The fruits is considered, to do with fruits, it's considered peira, it's considered tiva. The chadaman and the other amora says no, even perot and dinarim is also going to be a machloket between betilel, and Bet Shammai. So according to the Manda Amar, that even on the Chilul Perot on Dinarim, it's going to be a Machloket, Adami Palge, the fact that they're arguing by Slaim al Dinarim, Liflog be Perot al Dinarim. If they're already arguing on Slaim to Dinarim, they should also argue, right, in the case of Perot on Dinarim. The Bet Shammai is going to come and say, you're not going to be Mechalel Perot on Dinar Zahav. And therefore we understand that the, the, that the Dine Zahav is considered peira, right? To do the perot, right? And Kol in the other case. So says the Gemara, if they're going to argue, be perot al dinanim, if they're going to argue on the case of fruits on dinanim, hava mina hana mila, I would have thought to say that one of these words, be perot al dinanim, to do with perot on dinanim, aval bi slaim al dinanim. But when we're talking about slaim on dinanim, right? Modu, they do admit, modu lem bet betilel, bet shamai, that the, the gold to do with kesef is considered fruits, and therefore we're not going to be mechalel. Kamash Mulan comes to teach you the Tana that even slaim on dinarim is going to be the same halacha, but on fruits on dinarim, there is going to be a machloket between them, and then we're going to say, Tisayim, that it's Rabbi Yochanan that he says this, that em mechalin, the Amr Yochanan, as Rabbi Yochanan comes and he says, Asul ilvod dinar be dinar, you're not allowed to. to Lend out money, a dinar for another dinar, right? Why? Because it's going to be considered the bit of banan, which means that if I'm going to lend you a dollar and you have a dollar, but still, if it goes up in price, I'm paying you more now. So, therefore, it's considered a bit of banan. So, then the question is, what about by the dinarim?